Now we're going to use Photoshop to create some animation, but this time we're going to use the video timeline mode. The video timeline mode has more control and more expert options for video formats than the frame mode. This will also be more reminiscent of other video applications in regards to the way it handles adding keyframes and making edits. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'll start off by making a new document in Photoshop. I'm going to go to File New, and we're going to make a banner that is 728 by 90 pixels. It is worth noting that I do want to use 72 for the resolution, and whenever we're working on anything that's going to be displayed on the web or on a screen, we want to be working in the RGB color mode. So I'll leave these things as is, and I'll click Create, which is going to open up my new banner-based document. And I will begin by changing the background color. So I'm just going to fill it with the foreground color. I'll be using the keyboard shortcut to do so. The keyboard shortcut to fill with the foreground color is to hold down Option or Alt and hit the Delete key. Next, I'm going to bring in the artwork that I'm going to be using for this particular example. The artwork that I have is a fish that I've created inside of Illustrator. So I'm going to bring this in as a smart object. This will retain the vector information that was part of my original image. So when I place the image in here, you can see how it looks crisp and clear. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this up quite a bit to start off with because we're going to start off with the fish kind of off the screen and we're just going to basically see its eyeball. So I'm just going to make this fairly large and we'll leave it like this and you won't quite know exactly what it is. So that is going to be my starting position. I'll rename this layer fish. And now we're ready to start creating our animation. So I already have my timeline pane open and I'm just going to give a little bit more real estate to the timeline pane because this will make it easier to see. What I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and use the pull down menu if necessary and change the mode to create video timeline rather than creating a frame animation. Once I've selected that, I'll click the button to initiate the video timeline. And as you can see, the various elements of my document are going to come in as a video element. We do have an audio track, which we're not going to be using because it is possible to add audio, but we're not going to be doing that at this point in time. By default, the duration of the timeline is going to be five seconds and the element is going to show for five seconds. You can adjust how long the element is going to be by grabbing the end and stretching it out. And you can make this any duration, but we'll leave ours at five seconds for now. We can always change this later if we need to as well. Now, if I want to animate this element, you're going to open the little triangle to twirl open the various properties that you're able to animate. So by default, you can animate the properties of position, opacity, and style. And you'll notice that next to each of these properties, there is a little stopwatch icon. The stopwatch icon is how we create a keyframe. So we are going to use keyframes so that we can actually initiate a starting and or middle and ending point for the various elements. So let's just say that I wanted to animate my fish going across the screen. I can click the stopwatch for position, which is going to add a keyframe. So this is just making an initial starting point for my element. Then I'm going to drag the timeline indicator, the playback head, and I'll position that somewhere down the way in my timeline. And at this point, if I go ahead and move my element, so I'm just going to move this across the screen, you'll see that when I release my mouse, it's going to go ahead and add another little diamond, which in essence is another keyframe. So at this point, if we rewind and play, you'll notice that the fish is going to move across the screen. And then of course, after two seconds, it's just going to hold in that position because we haven't added any more keyframes. This is a pretty simple way that you can add the keyframes and initiate any sort of change that you might want. If we wanted to animate something else, like let's say opacity, maybe we want the fish to fade in. 
Again, I would need to decide where the starting point would be. So let's say I want that to happen at frame one. I'll click the stopwatch to turn on opacity and then I'll pull my mouse somewhere down the way. And let's say we'll have this happen at one seconds and 10 frames. And I'm going to, at this point, create another keyframe. So if you want to create another keyframe and copy the state, you'll click this little diamond and you can see it automatically adds the keyframe. Then I'm going to come back to frame one and we'll select our fish element and we'll go to the opacity part of the layer panel and just bring this all the way down to zero. So if we play our animation now, you can see that the fish kind of fades in over that first roughly second and a half, and then it's at full opacity, it's still moving, and then it's gonna complete its cycle and do whatever else it needs to do. So this is the way that we could create animation. What we're gonna do is we're going to alter this a little bit. I'm gonna get rid of these opacity keyframes. So if I wanna turn these off, I could click the stopwatch icon and you can see all of those opacity keyframes have been removed and because I'm at frame one the opacity is at zero so I'll need to bring this all the way back up to a hundred again and what we're gonna do here is we want to have the fish animate from the left hand pane and then go to the center and then continue on its way but we want it to scale down. So we want the fish to be pretty close to us for the first you know, half of our animation. And then we want it to scale down. Unfortunately, you're not able to animate properties like scaling and rotation. You can only do position, opacity, and then the styles. So any of the effects that you add, you can animate those. But in our case, we want to shrink this down. So in order to do that, there is a little trick that will allow you to be able to animate properties such as scaling and rotation. And that is to convert the element into a smart object. Now this could be a little confusing since we brought this image in as a smart object, but we actually have to do it within Photoshop in order for this effect to work. I am just going to delete and remove all of my position keyframes. So we just don't have any keyframes. And let's just select the fish and move it back over here to the right hand pane like we had it initially and i guess my keyframes were still on so i'm just going to turn off the stopwatch and remove those what we're going to do next is we're going to convert this to a smart object to do that we're going to go to the layer pane we'll right click and in the contextual menu that pops up we're going to select convert to smart object Nothing is really going to change here in the layer panel, but if we go back to the timeline and twirl open the fish layer, you'll now see instead of position, we have a transform property. The transform property is going to allow us to apply position changes, scaling changes, rotation changes. So we get a whole lot of things that we can do to the item by turning it into a smart object within Photoshop. Let's take a look at how this looks. I'm going to move my playback head up to about two seconds because we're going to have the fish sit at the right hand side for about two seconds. Then I'll turn on keyframing for transform and we'll have the fish scale and position itself in the middle of our screen at about three seconds. So I'm going to advance the playback head. We'll scale the fish down and I have my transform controls on, which is why I see this bounding box. I can grab from the edge and if I hold down the shift key, it will constrain the scaling and I'm going to just scale the fish down so that it fits within my banner, which means that it has to be pretty small because my banner is fairly narrow and we'll just move the fish over here to, well, let's just put it in the center of our banner. If we hit return to accept those changes, you'll see I get a new keyframe. And if we rewind and play our animation now, you're gonna see that the fish not only moves, but it also scales, which is what we want. And I think I'm just gonna scale this down a tiny bit more. That's what I wanted to be able to accomplish. And then we're gonna have the fish just kind of sit in the middle of the screen for about 20 frames. So I'm gonna make another keyframe right here. I can do that by clicking my add 
keyframe icon right here and then we'll go to the end of our timeline and we're just going to simply move the fish off of the screen and maybe we'll just move it all the way off is fine let's go ahead and rewind our timeline to the beginning the fish is going to hold in place it will scale and move and then it's going to move off the screen I did want to point out that as we watch the animation, you may notice that the fish doesn't look super clear and crisp. It's a little fuzzy, a little blurry. I am not sure why Photoshop does this. If we stop the timeline at any particular point, it looks awesome. And when we export, it will actually look really good too. So I just think it has to do with the rendering engine or something along those lines, but don't stress about it because it won't show like that in your final animation. Okay, so we have the basic animation of our fish, and what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of an effect to this animation so that when the fish is close to us for the first two seconds, we're going to have the fish blink twice. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to create a new layer. What I will do is I'm on the fish layer. I'm going to use my magic wand tool and I'm just going to click inside of the eye and then I'm going to click inside the pupil so that I get the entire eye right there and we're going to make a new layer and we'll just call this layer eyelid and I'm just going to fill this layer with my yellow so I already have yellow as my background color I can go to edit fill and I can choose the background color and I'll click OK, and it's going to fill with the yellow, which is what we want. That looks good. It looks like maybe I just have a little bit of area around the edge that didn't quite get filled. So with this layer selected, I'm just going to use my paintbrush tool, and I'll swap my foreground and background colors, and we'll just click in here just to paint over to make sure that that is completely opaque. We're going to be using this circle to create the closed lid position of our fish and what we're going to do in order to create this animation is we're going to use a layer mask to do so so i'm going to go to my rectangle tool i'm going to just draw a rectangle around the entire eyeball the eyelid and with the eyelid layer selected i'll come down to the bottom of my layer panel and i'm going to click right here which is going to add a layer mask and as you can see that adds the layer mask. Now the layer mask is a way that we can non-destructively conceal or reveal different areas of the layer. So when the layer mask is displayed as white, that's the portion of the image that we're going to see. When it's a black, that's the portion that we're not going to see. If I open the eyelid layer, you can see that I have animation properties to animate the layer mask. Before we can actually animate the layer mask, we are going to need to unlink the layer contents with the mask. Currently and by default, they are linked, which means that if we move the element, the mask and the element move together. So we are going to be animating just the layer mask, but not moving the layer element. So I'm going to click this little link icon to unlink these guys. And then I need to make sure that my layer mask is selected. So if you look carefully right here, you'll notice there's a little frame, a white frame around the layer mask. If I click on the layer, the white frame moves to that portion of the layer. So we want to make sure that the mask is selected and active. Then we'll come to the timeline and at frame one, I'm going to turn on the stopwatch for layer mask position, which is going to set my keyframe. I'll move the playback head to frame 10 and I'm just going to click the little diamond here to add a new keyframe. So currently the keyframes are in the exact same location. We'll move the playback head back to frame one and then I'm simply going to just move the layer mask up. So you can do this by using your move tool and just click hold and dragging and it, you can see as I do this it kind of looks like the eyelid is blinking. So I'm just going to move it all the way up. And now if we play our animation, you should see that the mask animates. So it looks like the eyelid is closing, which is exactly what we want. I'll come to frame 20 
and I'm going to make a new keyframe and then we'll just drag the layer mask back up so the eye opens. So if we play our animation sequence, you can see that the eye is going to appear to blink. So that is fantastic. We're going to do that twice, as I mentioned. We will have it wait about 20 frames. I'm going to create another keyframe. And again, when I do this, it'll just duplicate the previous keyframe. This is going to interfere a little bit with our fish moving. So we'll probably have to adjust these keyframes. We'll do that in just a minute. I'm going to advance to frame 20. And then we're going to select the eyelid mask and just bring it down just like we did before. Then I'll advance to two seconds and obviously everything's getting a little wonky, but we'll fix this in a second. I'll select with my move tool and I'll just move the mask up again. And that's going to set my third keyframe. And then we're just going to adjust the position of the fish actually moving. So we'll have that happen maybe at like 220. I'll just drag that keyframe over. And because I want the animation to occur a little more slowly where it scales and moves, I'm just going to kind of adjust these out a little bit and spread out our animation like so. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. If we go ahead and play from the beginning, the fish is going to blink twice. And then it's going to scale, sit on the stage for a second and then exit. And if we play the animation, you'll notice that the eyelid shows a tiny bit right here. That's just a result of my mask not being totally in the right spot. You can see how it's just down a little. So I'll come back to this final layer and just grab the mask and drag it up a touch. And that should resolve our issue. So once again, let's just check and make sure everything looks good. I'm going to uncheck my show transform controls so I'm not distracted by that bounding box. And there's our fish and... Perfect. All right, so this is an example of a video timeline animation. You can see that the process is a little bit different from the frame by frame animation technique that we looked at previously. Both techniques allow you to obviously create animation. They are a little bit different, so I encourage you to try both of them. And sometimes you'll want to use one over the other. As I mentioned before, it's probably a little bit more common that if you are going to be creating something for a video project, you would typically use the video timeline and perhaps an animated GIF, you would use the frame by frame. But certainly if we wanted to create an animated GIF, the process is the same as what we did before. I'm in my save for the web dialog box. You can see that the animation is here as long as I'm picking GIF as my file format. I can preview the animation right here and it'll show me what it looks like. And you can see if we look at it here, it looks nice and clear and crisp, which is how it's going to render. If I wanted to experiment a little bit with any of my settings, I can go ahead and try to experiment with the file size and maybe reducing the colors down. I might be a little bit more successful in trying less colors for this particular example because I think I have less colors. So if we were to play this one down here, you can see that it looks pretty good at the scaled up version. Even as the fish scales down, it looks great. This is using 32 colors. My file size is considerably smaller. It's 137 kilobytes. I would definitely encourage you to try to get the smallest file size possible whenever you're creating animation. So you're always going to want to come into this dialog box and just try to reduce things down. I mean, even at 16 colors, we might be able to get away with it because this is a vector artwork initially and we're using limited colors. We don't have a ton of colors. So that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save to export this out and I'll end up with my animated GIF.